Hello, in this video, we will discuss about the dilated veins in the abdomen and what are the what is the anatomical basis to understand the differentials of why you can have dilated veins in the abdomen. So let us have a look at the first case. In this case, you are seeing uh, large tortuous veins uh, typically found around this landmark and this is the umbilicus. And uh, in the second case, you are seeing uh, again dilated veins in the abdomen, but they are more laterally, not around the umbilicus. Uh, they're, they're located uh, almost laterally connecting. It looks like it's connecting two veins on the lateral side. So these are two typical cases that you will see. First, we'll, let us have a look at the first case. The first case is typically called as a caput medusa uh, because they are dilated veins around the umbilicus. And let us have a look at what is the anatomy behind it. Uh, if you do a dissection, as you see in this image, you can see that this is the round ligament of the liver, which was called ligamentum teres hepatis. Uh, it is basically the umbilical vein. This I've detailed about this in two videos, which I described earlier, that this is the obliterated umbilical vein. So umbilical vein was uh, important in the fetal circulation, but later it got completely ob obliterated into a cord-like structure. That's why it's called ligamentum teres, round ligament of the liver. But around that, you have very small veins, and these veins are called para-umbilical veins. Okay, that is very important. And these para-umbilical veins uh, have a communication with the portal venous system within the liver. That is the importance of this para-umbilical veins. So when the patient has a portal hypertension, uh, you have an increased pressure in the portal veins. These veins which communicate, the para-umbilical veins which communicate with the portal veins will be dilated. And when it gets dilated, it can communicate through collaterals into systemic veins. For example, this is a systemic vein. This is called the inferior epigastric vein. Okay. And uh, this is another uh, one which is called uh, the superior epigastric vein. Okay, not only these, you also have the, these two are veins are seen within the rectus sheath. That is the la, uh, the abdominal muscle that you see in the in the front. But beyond that, you also have superficial veins in the superficial fascia of the abdomen. That is what you are seeing here. And these veins are the lateral thoracic vein. Uh, which is draining as you can see into the upper limb vein into the axillary vein as well as the superficial epigastric vein which is draining into the great saphenous vein okay so these are these two are systemic veins that you find in the superficial fascia in the anterior abdominal wall so you can see that these para umbilical veins which is draining into the portal venous system it is communicating through a collateral system with the systemic veins so these portal veins, when it's communicating with the systemic veins, this is an example of a portosystemic shunt. Okay, so these are portosystemic shunts. So what you are seeing here as dilated veins are basically portosystemic shunts where the para-umbilical veins along with the ligamentum teres is coming and anastomosing with the systemic veins, for example, the lateral thoracic vein and the superficial epigastric vein that you find in the anterior abdominal wall. So this typically looks like, uh, you know, tortuous veins around the umbilicus. And that is why this is called caput medusa, as I said before, because medusa is a Greek mythological figure. And uh, the, the peculiarity of this figure is that from its head, you have something like snakes around it. So it looks like dilated, tortuous veins around the umbilicus looks like uh, the head of the medusa. And uh, that is the reason why it is called caput medusa. Caput medusa is a clinically noticeable feature seen in advanced uh, portal hypertension. Now, what are these para-umbilical veins? The para-umbilical veins, uh, if you look at this uh, this beautiful review article by Philip et al. Uh, on the anatomical basis of this uh, portosystemic uh, anastomosis, uh, we will learn that there are a couple of named veins within this, uh, very close to this umbilical vein. You can, in this picture, you can see this red cord. Okay, that red cord is the round ligament of the liver or the ligamentum teres hepatis, as I shown in the previous video. And you know that that is actually located within this uh, sheet-like membrane called the falciform ligament, right? So this is the falciform ligament. And within the falciform ligament, you have the location of this para-umbilical veins. The para-umbilical veins that have been found are the superior vein of SAPI that you see here. It is anastomosing with the, the what you see here as T is basically the portal vein. So that portal vein is having a left limb and a right limb. And you can see that from the left limb, you have small radicals which is communicating through this portal uh, superior vein 
vein of sappy into uh, this uh, communicating channel and uh, this is the internal thoracic vein let me move my icon over here this is the internal thoracic vein right this is the internal thoracic vein which is a systemic vein and this is a superior epigastric vein and uh, you can see that here you have the inferior vein of sappy inferior vein of sappy is also here which is again communicating the portal venous system this is the portal venous system into the uh, superior epigastric vein so you can see here that the superior epigastric vein which is a a systemic vein is anastomosing through the superior vein of sappy as well as the inferior vein of sappy and uh, also uh, below you have another vein called the vein of burrow so these are some named veins which forms the paraumbilical veins and these paraumbilical veins all will anastomose to the umbilicus and also not only to these systemic veins but also the uh, lateral thoracic vein that you saw in, uh, in the uh, earlier uh, image lateral thoracic vein as well as the superficial epigastric vein now beyond this i told you there is one more case which you need to know that is uh, these lateral veins okay this is a very close differential diagnosis of dilated veins in the abdomen other than caput medusa and here this is typically the enlargement or the collateral formation between the lateral thoracic vein earlier we mentioned about paraumbilical veins in the uh, uh, in the portosystemic anastomosis uh, but here it is between the lateral thoracic vein here Okay, this is the lateral thoracic vein and the superficial epigastric vein. So you can see that this collateral becomes enlarged. Okay, this enlarged vein is what you are seeing over here. And this is typically seen in an SVC or an IVC obstruction. Okay, let me work this out. Suppose here you have the SVC. Okay, that is the superior vena cover. Here you have the large IVC, inferior vena cover in the depths of the body. Uh, this SVC, suppose you have an obstruction in the SVC due to, uh, you imagine, a, a thoracic tumor. Uh, and this is not allowing the blood to pass through that SVC downwards. In that case, uh, there will be back pressure towards the tributaries of the SVC. And that includes this vein. This is the axillary vein. You have axillary vein over here, right? So th from this axillary vein, uh, you can have collateral formation between the lateral thoracic vein and it will eventually drain into superficial epigastric vein, which drains into great saphenous vein, uh, into femoral vein and thus uh, into the IVC. Okay, So this is one route by which the systemic vein of the SVC tributary can drain into the IVC and finally drain back into the into the uh, right atrium so similarly instead of an svc obstruction suppose you have an ivc obstruction okay so uh, there is an ivc filter and you have a thrombus formation inside the ivc the blood instead of going through the ivc the blood can again shunt back and come through the svc so in an ivc or an svc obstruction you can have dilated veins in the lateral abdominal wall and here the dilated veins that you see in the superficial uh, plane is between the lateral thoracic vein and the superficial epigastric vein. So these are two very important differentials of having uh, dilated veins in the abdomen. The first is caput medusa formed due to dilated uh, paraumbilical veins due to portal hypertension. And the next is thoracoepigastric vein. This vein, you can together call it as the thoracoepigastric vein that is seen in an IVC or an SVC obstruction. Okay. Thank you.